Water has always been a good type in Pokemon. Fishing rods and surfing are an integral part of most of the games, so there's over 150 water type Pokemon to choose from. That makes it the most abundant type in the game. But today, Elias and I are focusing on the water type attacks. There are a ton of viable options, so we'll be giving them all a look. For today, we're only focusing on attacking moves, so we won't talk a whole lot about status moves like Rain Dance or Withdraw. What's up, I'm Elias, and Generation 1 introduced a bunch of water type moves, but we won't be spending too much time on the weaker ones like Bubble and Water Gun. Let's take a look at some of the ones that are actually worth using, either at the end of your playthrough or in Link battles. Surf, Hydro Pump, and Waterfall are the three best water moves introduced in Gen 1, although Waterfall was basically pointless in this game. We'll come back to it later. Surf was the most commonly used water move in Gen 1. It's got 95 power, 100 accuracy, and no drawback. Not bad. It's also an HM, and you're required to use it to beat the game. So, the move also being a great attack is a nice bonus. But you could also go for Hydro Pump. In this gen, it's 120 power, but in exchange, it's 80% accurate. Most water types can learn both moves, so you get to choose whether you want the stronger move or the slightly weaker but more reliable one. Neither move had any secondary effects at this point, although Surf will get a minor one later on. There were also a couple notable water type signature moves in Gen 1. Clamp was Cloyster's signature move, although other Pokemon can learn it nowadays. Partial trapping moves aren't all that common these days, but they were pretty messed up in Gen 1. Clamp does some initial damage, then traps the target for up to 5 turns. Every turn the target is trapped, Clamp does the same amount of damage as the first hit. In modern games, a partially trapped Pokemon can still attack. Well, not in Gen 1. If you're trapped by Clamp, you can't attack until the move ends. If Cloyster is faster than you, it can Clamp you again as soon as you're freed from the move, potentially stun-locking you into oblivion. On top of all that, Clamp is the strongest partial trapping move in the generation, with a base power of 35. The only downside is its 85% accuracy, so it's possible that Cloyster misses one and you get to knock it out. Nowadays, Clamp's residual damage is simply 1 16th of the target's max health, and Pokemon can attack while they're partially trapped. A uh, little peek behind the curtains, uh, we are recording this video right after Elias got back from the gym. Did you deadlift 3,000 pounds like I told you to? Yes. Alright, Elias is now a world record holder. <laughs> Everybody congratulate him in the comments. Thank you. The other notable water move is Crab Hammer. Kingler signature move, uh, whoops, that's Krabby on your screen, hold on. That's better. Crab Hammer has 90 power and 85 accuracy, so that makes it weaker and less accurate than Surf. So what gives? Well, Crab Hammer has a high critical hit ratio, but this is Gen 1, so when I say it has a high crit chance, I mean it's virtually guaranteed. Crabs are people. Crabs are people. Shut up, New World's Strongest Man. Generation 2 only introduced two water type attacks, and they're just kind of... whatever. Whirlpool is a partial trapping move, but at this point it's just a worse version of Clamp. With partial trapping moves as a whole being nerfed in Gen 2, there just wasn't much of a reason to use Whirlpool. This move was eventually buffed in Gen 5 to be a clone of Clamp, but Surf and Hydro Pump are going to be better options most of the time. Whirlpool does get used by certain Pokemon, but not many. The other new water type attack in Gen 2 is Octillery's signature move at the time, Octazooka. Later on, Grap Locked would gain access to this move as well. Horsey can also learn it as an egg move because who knows why. This move is just... Bad. It's 65 power, which is weak, but it's only 85% accurate, and that combination of power and accuracy just doesn't work. It's got a 50% chance to lower the target's accuracy by one stage, but that doesn't make it a move that's worth using. Just use Surf, man. Generation 3 added a bunch of water type attacks, but most of them aren't all that special. For now, we'll get back to these. Hydro Cannon is a clone of Hyper Beam, which would be great in Gen 1, but this isn't Gen 1. Nowadays, Hyper Beam and its variants aren't any good, unfortunately. Water Spout is a pretty cool move, though. It starts at a whopping 1. 50 base power, but it gets weaker the less HP the user has. Kyogre often uses Water Spout in competitive play because of how much damage it can deal. Then it'll run a second Water Move, which you can use when Water Spout gets too weak. A max power Water Spout boosted by Kyogre's Rain, the same type attack bonus, and choice specs in later gens, coming off a base special attack stat of 150 is absolutely disgusting. If you're not prepared to deal with Kyogre, you're gonna drown. That kind of damage output is insane, so having to run two Water Moves isn't a big deal. You can also use Water Spout with Waylord. Uh, results may vary. Dive didn't really make any waves in Gen 3. No pun intended. You absolutely intended that pun. I did not! I did not! I don't know what to tell you! Dive didn't really make any waves in Gen 3, no pun intended, because it's a two-turn move like Dig and Fly. These moves are alright during a playthrough, but they're bad against other humans. AI trainers usually don't switch out their Pokemon. If they're at a type disadvantage, they'll just let their Pokemon die. But your friend can see you use Dive on turn 1, then they can switch to something that resists water on turn 2. But Dive ended up breaking the game in Generation 5. More on that later. Dive's existence actually buffed a couple other water type moves. If a Pokemon is underwater using Dive, they'll take double damage from Surf and Whirlpool. That's nice, although it's, that's not going to come up all that often. Water Pulse is only 60 base power, so most Pokemon won't use it past the 5th or 6th gym. 
but it also has a 20% chance to confuse the target. But this move would also see occasional use in later generations, thanks to new abilities being added. We'll talk about that a little later. Muddy Water is 90 power and 85 accuracy. It hits both opponents in a double battle, and it has a 30% chance to lower each target's accuracy. Not a great move, but starting in Gen 4, Surf hits your teammate as well as your opponents. So you might consider using Muddy Water instead of Surf during a playthrough, to make sure you only hit your opponents. Not the greatest idea since there's not many double battles, and Surf is required to beat a lot of games, but it's an option that you have. In some rare cases though, Muddy Water is a Pokemon's best option for water type coverage. In Gen 9, the electric type Belly Bolt can't learn Surf or Hydro Pump, so it uses Muddy Water to deal with ground types. The physical special split also occurred in Gen 4. In the first three generations, water moves were always special, but now the damage category was assigned to individual moves, instead of types as a whole. Four water moves flip from special to physical. Waterfall, Dive, Crab Hammer, and Clamp. Waterfall becoming physical was a huge deal, because it meant Pokemon like Gyarados could actually use their water stab effectively. Gyarados has a great attack stat of 125, but previously it had no physical water moves to use it with. This generation also added a secondary effect for Waterfall. Now it has a 20% chance to make the target flinch. Not bad. Back in Gen 1, Waterfall was just a boneless version of Surf. It's 15 base power weaker, it didn't have a secondary effect, and it wasn't even an HM. In fact, it was the signature move of Sea King, who can also learn Surf. Wow, really? So there's just no reason to use Waterfall at all in Gen 1. But in Gen 4 and Beyonce, the water type has... <laughs> Ah, I see what you did there. I'm pretty sure that was autocorrect, to be completely frank with you. Oh, okay. But in Gen 4 and Beyonce, the water type has good reliable physical and special options, thanks in part to Waterfall. You'll love to see it. Crab Hammer becoming physical is also nice for Kingler, as well as Crawdon, who can also learn the move now. Crawdon's stab of choice is usually Waterfall, though, because it's more accurate than Crab Hammer. Dive and Clamp being flipped didn't make much of a difference in the grand scheme of things, although Dive would cause some issues later on. The best water type attack introduced in Gen 4 is Aqua Jet. It's a priority move, so it's handy for finishing off opponents with critically low health. Azumarill uses it alongside its ability Huge Power, which doubles its attack stat. Since Aqua Jet is a priority move, it'll usually go first, effectively bypassing Azumarill's low speed stat. Combine that with Huge Power in either a Choice Band or the move Belly Drum, and you've got a move that's strong and fast. Heck, some Pokemon that aren't Water type use Aqua Jet. It's a solid option for Pokemon like Bear Tick. Wait, can Bear Tick learn Ice Shard? I think so. No, it can't. It can't. Wow, look at that. That's weird. Like, it can learn the water type priority move, but not the ice type one. Oh well, what are you gonna do? Gen 4 also introduced the ability Technician. If a move is 60 power or less, Technician will make it 50% stronger, so Water Pulse becomes a 90 power move with a chance to confuse. In some of the following generations, Meowth would use Water Pulse as a coverage option in Little Cup, despite having a slightly higher physical attack stat compared to special attack. Later on in Gen 6, Mega Launcher was also introduced, and it was given to Clawitzer and Mega Blastoise. This ability powers up Pulse moves by 50%, which made Water Pulse a viable option for these guys as well. Generation 5 added a new water type move, and it quickly became the default choice for special attacking water Pokemon. Scald is slightly weaker than Surf, with a base power of 80 compared to 95, but to compensate, it has a whopping 30% chance to burn the target. Most of the standard fire type moves only have a 10% chance to burn, so a water type move with a 30% chance really shook things up. Burn is a debilitating status condition, especially for physical attackers. When Scald was introduced, burn damage was one eighth of your max HP. Combine that with the fact that burn also cuts your physical attack's power in half, and you've got a powerful status and an incredible move. When Scald was introduced, Burn did more damage than Leftovers can heal, so bulky Pokemon holding Leftovers can't just sit there eating Scalds forever. Fire-type Pokemon can't be burned, but they're weak to water, so they're not a good way to deal with Scald either. Scald was so powerful, in fact, it almost got banned in Gen 6 UU, the second tier of competitive Oras. There were a metric ton of water types in UU, and they all had access to Scald. Water types tend to be pretty bulky, and Scald burns made them even harder to knock out, because your physical attacks deal half damage. So Smogon created a secondary UU ladder where Scald was banned. If people wound up preferring the No Scald meta, then it would be banned on the main ladder as well. But that didn't wind up going anywhere. The No Scald ladder just kind of faded into obscurity, and people went back to playing regular UU. Even after burn damage was lowered from 1 8th to 1 16th of your max health, Scald was still the definitive special water type move. It continued to dominate in Generation 7 and 8, but then it was effectively deleted from the game in Scarlet and Violet. Scald was a TM move in Gens 5 through 8, and most water types can learn it. The only Pokemon that can learn Scald by level up are the Water Monkeys and Volcanion, and neither of them were in Scarlet and Violet when the games came out. 
With Scald losing his TM status to start Gen 9, there were no Pokemon that can learn the move in the game. But Volcanion was eventually added via Pokemon Home Support, and Scald returns to the TM in the DLC. This time around, its distribution is way more limited, so most special attacking water types went back to using Surf. Gen 5 also introduced the Elemental Pledge moves for starter Pokemon. If you use Water Pledge on its own, it's a 50 base power move with no secondary effect. Pretty underwhelming, but it gets supercharged in double battles. If you use Water Pledge and Fire Pledge on the same turn, only the slower Pokemon will attack. They'll use a 150 base power Water Pledge, creating a rainbow on your side of the battlefield for 4 turns. The rainbow doubles the chance for moves to inflict secondary effects, just like the ability Serene Grace. So Scald would have a 60% chance to burn, Crunch would have a 40% chance to lower defense, and Charge Beam would have a 140% chance to raise their special attack. In a similar vein, if you select Water Pledge and Grass Pledge, the slower Pokemon will use a 150 base power Grass Pledge, creating a swamp on the target side of the field. This swamp effect quarters the opposing team's speed for 5 turns. These moves don't see a whole lot of play, but we think they're pretty interesting concepts, so we decided to include them today. Meanwhile in doubles, Purloin and Lipart nearly broke the game with the move Dive of all things. This strategy was known as Dive Cats. With the help of their ability Prankster, the move Assist, and the hell item Lagging Tail, they can make themselves almost invincible. Assist calls a random move that some Pokemon in your party knows, even if they're not on the battlefield. But if you just fill your team with Pokemon that only know Dive and moves that Assist can't call, you'll always get Dive. On turn 1, both cats would use Assist to call Dive. Assist is a status move, which means it boosts the plus one priority by Prankster, so it'll activate before most attacks. That means they're diving underwater and becoming semi invulnerable before most Pokemon can hit them. Then on turn two, they come back to the surface, but this time they're moving last because they're holding lagging tails, which makes the move last in their priority bracket. Prankster doesn't apply on turn two because now they're using dive instead of assist. The cats are diving underwater before their opponents attack and resurfacing after they attack, so it proved to be pretty overpowered. Starting in Gen 6, the strategy is no longer possible. Dive can no longer be called by assist, and the same goes for other attacks that have a charging turn dig, fly, shadow force, and so on and so on. Generation 6 didn't add any notable notable widely distributed water type moves. In fact, the only new water attacks are signature moves. This gen saw the introduction of Kyogre's Origin Pulse, Volcanion's Steam Eruption, and Greninja's Water Shuriken. These are all good moves in their own right, but we're gonna save most of the signature moves for another video. A lot of moves had their power changed in Gen 6, including several water moves we've talked about already. Surf and Muddy Water both got lowered from 95 power to 90, and Hydro Pump dropped from 120 to 110. Bubble got buffed from 20 to 40 power as well. That's nice, I guess. Besides the water type Z move Hydro Vortex, Gen 7 also added a new physical water type option in Liquidation. It's 85 power, making it slightly stronger than Waterfall, and instead of a 20% flinch chance, it has a 20% chance to lower the target's defense. For the most part, Liquidation became the premier physical water move. It's not quite as strong as the special move Surf, but it's still a solid attack. For more videos like this, subscribe to Me Plays Games. As I mentioned in the last video, I've been singing acapella with my school's group Tonal Recall. A couple weeks ago, we competed in ICCA quarterfinals where we got fourth place. We think. More about that at the end of the video if you're interested. Aside from the max move Max Geyser, Gen 8 introduced two more non-signature water moves. Flip Turn was added in the Isle of Armor DLC of Sword and Shield. It was one of 18 new tutor moves, one for each type. Flip Turn is 60 base power, and it switches the user out when it hits. That makes it a slightly weaker version of two existing moves, U-Turn and Volt Switch. These moves were incredible because in most cases, you have to choose between attacking and switching on any given turn. Being able to do both at the same time is really nice. Flip Turn doesn't deal that much damage, but many water types will run alongside a stronger water move. The pivoting aspect is that valuable. We also got Wave Crash in Legends Arceus. It's a 120 power physical move that deals re oil damage to the user. So it's a water type version of Flare Blitz or Brave Bird. It's not as widely distributed as something like Liquidation, but Wave Crash is a good choice for the Pokemon that do learn it. It's the strongest physical water move in the game, so it's worth using despite the recoil damage. Palafin has a base attack stat of 160, so it does a metric ton of damage with this move. I must remind you all of this fun fact, if you draw a heart on your chest, you immediately become 10 times stronger. It's the plus 10 strength belt. Yeah, so uh, if you'll excuse me, uh, I have to go uh, deadlift 31,000 pounds. With Scald being effectively deleted from the game to start Gen 9, Surf rose to prominence again as the quintessential special water move. Besides the signature moves, two new water type attacks were added. Chilling Water is pretty weak, only clocking in at 50 base power, but in exchange, it lowers the target's attack by one stage, so Chilling Water is a solid tool despite not being that strong. 
Aqua Cutter isn't learned by a ton of Pokemon, but it's a 70 base power physical move. Not as strong as Liquidation or Wave Crash, but Aqua Cutter has two notable advantages that make it worth using. First off, it has a high critical hit rate, which makes it a water type clone of stuff like Slash, Night Slash, Shadow Claw, and Psycho Cut. It's also a slicing move, which means it's boosted by the new ability Sharpness. That makes Aqua Cutter a great stab choice for Hisuian Samurai, and a viable coverage option for Gallade, who learns, like, all the slicing moves. And that's all we got for today as far as water type moves go. There's a ton of stuff we didn't cover, because we skipped over the signature moves and status moves. Leave a comment if you'd like to see videos on those in the future. And now some acapella talk for those of you who are interested. I went to a competition earlier this month as Tonal Recall's Beatboxer. We were one of eight groups who competed, and unfortunately we didn't get top three. They don't officially announce any placements past third, but somebody overheard the judges say we got fourth, so that's what I'm rolling with. Since then we've been doing all sorts of other fun stuff. We are the opening act for another acapella group, who is visiting from the University of Illinois. Shoutouts to the other guys, it was a great time, really funny show you put on. Total Recall's president mentioned me plays games while we were all hanging out after the show, so there's a non-zero chance some of the guys are watching this video. If you happen to be one of the other guys, hey, what's up man, drop a comment. Meanwhile in Total Recall, we're also working on some new arrangements I wrote. We're also recording an album next month, so be on the lookout for that. We'll see you all next time, Good night, fellas, sleep well.